All right, thank you for staying with Daybreak. We'll run some of your feedback in just a bit. We'll have them up in a short while. But Maliba, where does this leave the young people and the young voters? Because there's a lot of conversations, people saying they don't want to vote anymore. There's voter apathy somehow. It has not been proven, but people, young people are saying that they don't, they're not in a rush to do it because it's the same people at different times. Where does this leave the young people? I do not think that young people have uh, substantively said that they are not willing to vote. Because in any case, uh, besides women, if women were to be looked at as a constituency, then the other big uh, voting block is always young people. Now, to actually just put that in perspective, is that 78% uh, of our population is aged 35 and below. Yeah. Uh, then, of course, if you are looking at uh, the age of majority from 18, uh, to what Article uh, 260 defines as youth, that is uh, aged between 18 and 34, because they say anyone who is who, ha who has turned 18 and has not turned 35. So practically, if you're going to work out that mathematics is 18 to 34, then you find that they are 13.6 million young people who uh, qualify as youth, as defined as by Article 260. Uh, the challenge is that uh, the youth, people aged between, uh, if you look at IBC's data, the people aged 18 and 34, uh, between 18 and 34, form 51 percent of the voting bloc, or of out of IBC's 19.6 million registered voters, 51 percent of those registered voters are uh, aged between 18 and uh, uh, 34. We we wouldn't say that there is voter apathy. You know wh why we push that narrative is because uh, sometimes we have created these uh, theories in our minds uh, about existing vote blocks that are not there. For one, our politics is largely ethnic. And there is nothing entirely wrong with us identifying with where we come from because those are the basic mobilizing uh, uh, tools that we have and as a platform. So a tribe is a tool when you're, you're trying to do mobilization, especially because a lot of them live together. Their interests look similar, except for Nairobi, that is. So we are talking about where does that leave young people? The youth, I need to repeat this, that the youth do not exist as a voting bloc at least in the bigger overall picture. They win small battles. Yeah. Uh, but the entire war, they do not present themselves as a united front. For this reason, that uh, young people make, uh, can make and break an election, but at smaller uh, battle level, not at the strategic uh, level where we're talking about a whole war, if we were to consider this as a war. I'll give you an example. In, in Kiamba, uh, in Kiamba in the morning, one particular wing started making fun of young people in the morning, laughing at a certain candidate, saying that uh, he invested a lot of time in the youth, and the youth were drunk, uh, they were asleep, they had not woken up, they had registered in neighboring constituencies. You know how they, they went around and stigmatized young people, but that candidate eventually won that particular election. Yeah. And the people who swayed that particular election were young people. So, but then when it comes to the national level, a lot of times young people do not regard themselves as a constituency. You know, for women, it's much easier because uh, a woman is a woman. Even a uh, 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 one-day-old already, it's continuous. But the youth age, of course, it's transitory. So along the way, then yeah. there are things that change. So when it comes to national politics, a lot of times young people, first of all, regard themselves as different. Uh, other identities override the youth identity. That is where the challenge is. So... We, we might not necessarily look at it from a, a perspective of where the youth vote does not necessarily count. It yeah. counts, but not in the bigger picture the way we would want to see. Okay. Because when Uhuru Kenyatta came to power, uh, Moses spoke about the analog versus digital. The truth is that Uhuru and William rode on the youth wings to power. The, it was literally that particular uh, generational group that actually drove them to, to office. And they for good reason spoke about the others being uh, being uh, analog and then digital th th that is sloganeering it's common for politics because if you do not frame the playing field somebody else will frame you yeah. so th there's nothing wrong with that uh, people get around with that so i then still feel that uh, uh, mudiora myself uh, moses and gloria here and the other people who are youthful but they already we have got four cohorts that consider themselves youthful yeah because we have got this uh, sub cohort uh, of people who were born between 1977 to 1985. Those people are neither uh, baby boomers and they are not necessarily properly what you would consider millennials. 
they grew through the revolution. So they are normally called the exenials, yeah. that small group. Then there's these millennials properly. Of course, sometimes, uh, depending on who is defining, somebody else will talk about millennials starting from 1980. But then that sub cohort sometimes, they have got some old traits of the baby boomers, and then they also have got Generation Y characteristics. So uh, people, demographers have come up with their characterization. Yeah. So then there's millennials, guys born from 1985 coming up to 1996. Uh, properly, they are all over out there. But then there is a younger group that is already here. They do not consider themselves uh, millennials. Uh, we call them the Generation Zers, born between 1996 to uh, 2013. A number of them are coming of age. The way they look at things, the way they do things, and I've given this example here before. I, I want to use Gengeton, for example. Gengeton is largely populated by uh, Generation Zers. These are guys who, number one, did not complain about youth fund not funding their music, but they were able to chase Tanzanian and uh, Nigerian music from the top charts. First of all, by using mobile phones, those guys are very much global, they are entrepreneuring, they work very different. They do not consider, but if they look at you, Trevor, they, look at, they see you as an elder. I am sorry, but when I want to come on Zazi. <laughs> but you see, constitutionally, you are still a youth. <laughs> so, uh, even as we talk about these uh, groups, you must actually have to segment them and see what uh, interests them. Yeah. So, in the larger picture, the youth... Uh, if you are look, going to look at at national level, first of all, we are our tribes. Yeah. Other identities override the youth constituency and identity when it comes to national votes. But okay. in smaller battles here and there, yeah. they win. Okay. Yeah. Mudiora, are you also leveraging on the youth to propel you to the state house? Very much. And like he just said, if the youth decided to back a candidate, they single-handedly can take that candidate to the state house. Now, the feuding between the deputy president and the president leaves the youth with an opportunity to look elsewhere, to evaluate the fact that we gave this duo power and authority to transform this nation. What have they achieved for us so far? And the report card is not very good. Yeah. So the feuding, of course, for some of us, say it should continue. When the deputy president and the president were coming together, we were not consulted. So right now that their marriage is falling apart, we have nothing to do with that. We should concern ourselves with the things that matter, the unemployment that they have not been able to fix the Article 43 matters that they have not adequately addressed. You look at the youth agenda on which they rode they to get into office. The implementation of that has left a lot to be desired. So clearly, what the young people of this nation should be doing at this moment is scanning the horizon for who else is in that field. And I'm glad that on this panel, we have people who in 2022 will be running for office. Yeah. In the past, we have been bold enough to elect young leaders into office, MCAs, members of parliament, senators, but then we've never been bold enough to imagine that we can vote in a president who looks just like us, one who understands what our tribulations really are. We run into the wave with these slogans that they come with, and at the end of it, we are shortchanged. So I would urge young Kenyans to be selfish for once and not focus on the tough wars we are seeing in yeah. the national politics. Okay. But then ask, now that the people in that field, and it's the whole lot, you start from Musalia Mudavadi, Kalonzo. They've been in government. They've been deputy prime ministers. They've been prime ministers. They've been presidents. They've been all manner of positions in government, and yet they never delivered on the Kenyan promise. Yeah. So we should be bold enough at this point to say yeah. the courts have gone to explain that our constitution is... So if we have a good constitution, if we have a population 
that's described as resilient, hard-working industries, then the only missing link to make this nation great yeah. has been our leadership. Okay. Let's fix that and let's fix it from the very top. Okay. Let's believe in ourselves. Yeah. We are world beaters. Okay. We just confirmed it from the athletics the other day. Yeah. And if you actually go to see the implementers of that event, the World Under 20 Championship, they were young people, the people who put it together. Yeah. So we can deliver. Let's believe in ourselves yeah. and let's work towards taking this leadership mantle. Oh, okay, Gloria, very brief comments on what, where this leaves the youth and what they need to focus on now. Arnold has been speaking for three minutes yeah, and I get brief I, comments. I, I, I'm, I'm speaking <laughs> to my director here and I'm the one okay. running the show. So I, 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 I will say, I will say this. Um, where does that leave the youth uh, yeah. in politics, particularly at this moment? If you look at the alliances that are out there, you have One Kenya Alliance, whose uh, tagline is Omoka na Oka, which is very ambiguous. We don't know what that means. Una Omoka wapi, it doesn't really make sense. You look at ODM, they are pushing by Kenya, build Kenya, which is uh, something we've tried and failed repeatedly, and I'm not sure what they're going to do different with that. You have Meondeleo Chap Chap with a fresh start. Yeah. Um, again, I don't know what that means in terms of the youth agenda, in terms of, you know, a fresh start from what. And then, um, then I asked myself, and this is the reason why, Trevor, I'm a member of UDA, because I'm in the youth category and I really want to push the youth agenda. And uh, you know what UDA pushes and what is the tagline? Kazi ni kazi. As my co-panelists have said here, we are more focused on creating the jobs that we promise the youth. We are more focused on uh, economically empowering people, either in the youth, women, whichever category. And I, I'm privileged enough to actually have sat in the secretariat that uh, created um, what you call the Hustler Nation, not really manifesto, but the bottom-up economic approach details. And in there, it's very specific on what we are targeting in terms of the youth. We are targeting the youth in different production groups, in the production group of ICT and innovation. And I'm not just talking in terms of high level. You've had Joe Musheru actually launch the um, data center, the government data center. We are still yet to be told how many jobs were created from that data center. So when we are talking about data centers, we are talking about over 2,000 direct jobs. So when you go to the next category, which is modern agribiz, right now the youth are very excited about agriculture because they have innovative ways, you know. They are actually bringing in the innovation into agriculture. Trevor, so, Oroma seems to be... Hold on, hold on one second. So at, at the end of the day, for me, it is how to target the youth to empower them economically through these different production okay. groups, yeah? And uh, the cottage industries, which for me, that's where the youth fall into. Right now, if you look at anyone who has a startup, it is actually the youth. Okay. So um, for me, unless I see a, a, a direct uh, intentional approach of how we are going to engage the youth into politics. Remember, not everyone is a politician. So in order for them to be part of these conversations, you have to tell them, why are you? Why am I engaging you? I want to be the member of parliament of Obasi, but what I want to do for you as the youth is actually ensure that your innovation within the agricultural field that you are in as a youth actually p has an impact, an economical impact into your, into your livelihood. So I think, where does that leave the youth? The youth okay. right now, if they have to look around and, and try to resonate with whatever political um, uh, 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 allegiances that are out there, I would say for me and uh, many of the youth out here who believe in the Hustler Nation movement, yeah. I would say be very selfish enough to understand what am I going to benefit, for instance, if Arnold Maliba gets into power? What am I going to benefit if so-and-so becomes the president? And for me, it is, it is clear in my mind mm -hmm. that... As at now, yeah. UDA is offering me as a youth something to look forward to, something that is direct, something that I can actually hold and explain in okay. terms of the bottom-up economic All approach. Right. Moses? Yeah. Uh, Trevor, you know uh, why there is only one Bible and different denominations? Yeah. Uh, this is the reason. It tells you the nature of human beings. Uh, for instance, you, you've had my sister here trying to launch the, the UDA manifesto. And, Thank uh, you. Thank you. And, uh, it's an ideology. And, and, and a, a, a youth here wants to be a president, but my sister here is affiliated to, a, to another party. And w today we are talking, uh, asking ourselves why youths don't exist as a voting bloc. Simple. One. 
all these presidential aspirants come with manifestos. They all know that the, the, the youths are the largest voting bloc. And uh, they all have uh, something, uh, you know, in their manifestos to entice the youth. So in one way or the other, the youths will find themselves uh, resonating with, with, with different uh, people. Uh, are you getting me? So what we are saying, Nani, uh, Trevor, yeah. is, is, is a, a simple, that uh, today there are different formations. For, for example, you know, there, there is the Hasla Nation, there is the One Kenya Alliance, there is again the, the, the other side of the, 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 the two guys who have divorced their past wives and decided to come together. So you ask yourself, uh, is there any one uh, you know, political formation that the youth with, uh, will align to you, you know, as a voting bloc? The answer is absolutely no, because Different, different people think differently. And as a youth, I'm thinking differently from her. She's, she's a hustler nation. I'm not. I don't, I don't believe in that uh, sloganeering uh, thing because... And, and yet you're both young. Sorry? And yet you're both youth. Yes, we, we are both youths because uh, I, I, I'm not uh, that myopic. So uh, what, what we are saying, uh, Trevor, yeah. as the youth of this country, what we need to be... To be, to be to be seeing now from from uh, youth is uh, is uh, for example uh, our, our 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 fellow panelist here wants yeah. to become the president he should be telling the youth what exactly he will be doing for the youth and trying to you know as youth, we talk the same language. So it's very easy for him, if he has a manifesto for the youth, it's very easy for him to win more youth, if, if, if not 100% of the youth, to win more youth than, than any, 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 other, a, a, any other faction. Okay. But uh, truth be told, yeah. you know, youth are young. Yeah. They have just finished college. Uh, and uh, the, 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 these politicians call, call youth poor. Youths are not poor. They are just starting life. You know, there is a difference between starting life and being poor. Mm -hmm. A person who has finished uh, college last year or three years back, uh, you don't ex expect that person to be filled the rich. Okay. So uh, they take advantage of the youths. They, 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 they call them poor and uh, try to tell them we are taking you out of this poverty. Yeah. And, and the youths are too myopic to, 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 to see that it's, it's just I a I think tag. let's have okay. political let's, tolerance yeah. because, you know, calling no, myopic no, people, I think let's, let's no, be tolerant Robert, towards you who respects them. No, because, you know, the UDA, just because you, you follow it that ideology okay. does see, not mean you're myopic. You see, let, no, let us be tolerant. Tre Trevor, 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 you'll have to, to save me here. Yeah, but myopic I, I, is... I didn't talk when... Let, let's just finish up. Let him finish. Let yeah. him finish. Finish. Yes, you know, I didn't talk when you were launching let's your manifesto. Respectful. So what what exactly I'm saying, Nani Trevor, is that th this short sightedness of 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 people is landing this country uh, to, 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 to to it's headed this country to nowhere okay. because uh, we, we 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 need uh, the youth now. Uh, to to interrogate all these things when when a person comes and yeah. calls you poor you you should interrogate that when a person comes and tells you i will do a b c d you should first ask yourself what exactly have you been doing for the youth it, it, because you've you've been in power and and i i don't think you, you are you, for example uh, if if you are Raila Odinga and you are saying you are going to do ABCD for the youth you you were the, the the prime minister if if you are William Ruto you you want to do for the youth ABCD you, you are the deputy president show us in your docket how many youths have you given jobs how many persons living with disabilities have you be, uh, given jobs? And I'm talking this as the chairpersons with disabilities. In, in, in selecting the cabinet, how many persons with disabilities have you given, you, you know, the, the, the ministerial uh, positions and the PSs? Don't just uh, 
pretend that you are coming out of nowhere, you never had power, you never had vacancies to give the youths and persons living with disabilities and okay. women, and now all of a sudden you want power and you want to get all these vacancies to give the youth. That is a, uh, that okay. is a very deceiving all way right. of... Hold that thought. I have to cross over to Inora FM where they right now have an exclusive interview with the...